You know, one piece of uh, lore in games that has always interested me has been the Bite of 87 from Five Nights at Freddy's. It's such an interesting and, you know, kind of mysterious sort of topic. It's like, we still don't know who caused it. All we know is that there were like, you know, four suspects on who could possibly have actually done the bite. I believe it was, what, Foxy, uh, Freddy, and Mangle? Those are the suspects. And it's like, you know, it's a huge load of debate on who could actually, like, have possibly caused the bite. Uh, I personally believe it was Mangle. I mean, um, who's shooting at me? Uh, that's a tower. Um, but like, you know, the fucking, what is it? Uh, anyway, the, you know, the bite of 87 was like, you know, huge incident for Fazbear Entertainment. You know, some poor dude got their frontal lobe bitten out by uh, animatronic and like, you know, caused the uh, animatronics to, you know, be forced to, you know, be put in, uh, not be allowed to move around uh, in daytime to, you know, help reduce the risk of this happening. Um, and, you know, that was a shame because it really, like, you know, reduced the, uh, the enjoyability of the, uh, you know, restaurants, because, you know, part, the whole part of the thing, the whole part of, that, of the restaurant was that, you know, the characters, they moved around, they delivered pizza to you, you know, it was really cool, um, but, like, now they don't even do that, it's such a big shame, um, but, we, driftwood, anyway, um, anyway, uh, but yeah, Fortunately, the guy who got his frontal lobe bitten out, you know, he, uh, surprisingly was still able to live without a frontal lobe, it was impressive. Um, we don't know exactly, no, we did, not only do we not know who did the bite, we also don't know who the victim was. Um, anyway, oh, by the way, Bite of 87 commonly confused with the bite of 83 but that and the bite of 83 are like completely separate incidents you know did no correlation to each other other than just some kid got bit in the head some dude got bit in the head um, only difference was you know bite of 83 took place in you know 1983 and you know it was a kid I think his name was common consensus is that his name is Evan and um, he, uh, you know, he died. Poor kid. Um, his brother, Michael, it was Evan Afton. His brother, Michael Afton, was the guy who shoved him in the suit. Um, and his kid was crying, obviously. And, uh, he, let's see. Uh, yeah, that one. Okay. Anyway, um, he, uh, yeah. Poor kid was crying, and he... He just didn't survive the attack, man. Um, <laughs> the attack. Well, he didn't survive getting, you know, bit. Which... Pussy. Anyway. <laughs> um, he, uh, yeah, he died from it. It was bad. Bad thing. But yeah, that was the Bite of 80. That was the Bite of 83. You know, completely different from the Bite of 87. No correlation to each other. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, the... What was it? Three suspects of the bite of uh, 87 were Foxy, Mangle, and Freddy. Now, of course, Freddy and Foxy at this time were um, Withered Freddy and Withered Foxy because, you know, they were, they were, this was FNAF 2, they were the Withereds, you know? Um, but an important thing to remember is that they were also in a dilapidated and destroyed state so obviously their jaws, their servos, you know, the programming inside them was obviously not up to snuff for them to be moving around. Um, and they, uh, you know, and there it was more than likely that the mechanism in their jaw was, uh, you know, malfunctioning, broken, and uh, it wasn't, you know, it was not safe. Um, the interesting thing, though, is that the main reason why I don't think it's Freddy or Foxy is that 
Freddy or Foxy would either have had to come out of parts and service, which, you know, would have immediately aroused suspicion due to, you know, the old destroyed animatronics being, you know, out in the wild, out in the pizzeria, which, during the daytime, which is not good. Um, so, it's like, I doubt that it was Freddy, but there's, I doubt it was Freddy or Foxy, but there's definitely, you know, evidence to support both sides of that argument, and, uh, you know, but, like, Mangle is definitely, like, the most plausible of the suspects, because, like, I mean, what was the evidence for Freddy and Foxy? It was, like, for Freddy, there was, like, you could see handprints on his, uh, on his suit that, you know, one could make in a struggle, you know, trying to get their head out of, uh, the head of Freddy Fazbear, you know. But interestingly, those, those handprints, those were in, uh, you saw those in the FNAF 1 Freddy, which, and I don't believe they were on FNAF 2's Withered Freddy, so it's like, that kind of automatically eliminates him from, you know, being a suspect because, like, you know, the bite happened in 1987, which was when FNAF 2 took place. FNAF 1 takes place after FNAF 2, so they had, it had to, the bite had to have happened uh, in 1987, because obviously the bite of 87, and it could not have been Freddy, um, due to the lack of handprints, you know, there's not, simply not enough evidence in support of it being Freddy who caused the bite of 87. Um, Anyway, and then with Foxy, I know that in FNAF 1, uh, when he, when Foxy would run down the hallway, people noticed that, you know, his jaw seemed to be broken, and it seemed to be, you know, bouncing up and down as he ran, which definitely, you know, helped, uh, increase the possibility of the culprit being Foxy, and, you know, a lot of people believed it was Foxy for a long, long time, um, I, I even did back when the first game came out. Um, but the issue with that is that, you know, uh, again, Foxy could not have... Foxy most likely did not exit parts and service in FNAF 2 on the day of the bite because obviously there would be uh, pizzeria staff around. He could not have, you know, gone in. He could not have gone into the pizzeria and went over to wherever the birthday party was being held and, you know, bite a person on the head and destroy their frontal lobe. Um, but, and the, really, the only suspect that's left is Mangle. And I think it's most plausible. I think it's, like, most likely it is Mangle because, like, there's a lot of evidence pointing to it being f caused by Mangle. I mean, even... Mangle's, uh, you know, attack animation, their, uh, her jump scare is, you know, him literally leaping down from the ceiling and, you know, chomping at the, uh, at the player's head. So it definitely wouldn't be, you know, too far from, too far out of reason that, you know, during the birthday party, uh, Jeremy was, you know, attending the birthday party, and they were in Kid's Cove, um, and they, uh, the Mangle crawled up onto the ceiling and bit Jeremy on the head. I, it's very likely to me, honestly. Um, so, you know, what happens? Uh, let's see, how about another problem? Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, they, it's like, it had to have been Mangle, there was literally no other option. It had to have been. Um, the fun thing is, with, uh, with the advent of FNAF 4, obviously there's a huge divide in the community. People didn't know if it was, you know, Foxy and stuff who caused the bite. Um, honestly, like... I do, I do still think, like, 
If I were to rank the plausibility of who uh, caused the bite, I'd say definitely like uh, Mangle would definitely be at the top. Foxy would probably be in second place, and Freddy would be in third. Um, and you know that does actually kind of tie into uh, you know in earlier in the FNAF timeline and like FNAF four. Um, you know the bite of eighty three happened, and we know that Michael. Uh, Michael Afton was the, you know, the cause of the bite of A3 because he shoved his brother, uh, Evan, into Fredbear's mouth, which, uh, Evan's crying triggered the spring locks in Fredbear's, uh, suit, which caused his jaw to snap shut. Um, so, obviously, Michael was at fault. But the interesting thing is that, uh, I think the common consensus about FNAF 4 now is that, uh, the character you take control of in the game is not Evan, but actually Michael, and he's having nightmares and being tormented by the nightmare animatronics because he killed Evan, and it's, like, weighing heavily on his mind. And the main reason why we think that is because, um, in the Five Nights at Freddy's survival logbook, um, it's more than, it's, I think it's heavily implied that the, uh, book was owned by Michael Afton, and, you know, there's a bunch of secret codes and messages in the, uh, in the book, and one thing that's really noteworthy is that Michael actually draws Nightmare Fredbear, and, you know, the only other person to have, uh, known who Nightmare Fredbear was and who he, what he looked like had to have been Evan, but Evan was dead, so it had to have been Michael, because um, I doubt that William knew I mean, technically actually, William could have uh, known Nightmare what Nightmare Fredbear looked like but it probably wasn't William who owned that uh who, you know, owned that logbook. Like, why would he work at his own pizzeria? Um, and he, uh, anyway, <coughs> sorry, getting a little sidetracked, but, you know, it was most likely Michael who owned the logbook, and he drew the, um, he drew the, uh, oh, hello. He drew the picture of uh, Nightmare Fredbear, so it, I think it had to have been um, Michael, who was the protagonist in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I mean, it just it just makes too much sense to me, honestly. Um, but the other thing ow, is that, you know, if, if Michael uh, you know, if Michael hadn't, uh, known who, you know, Fredbear was, um, well, actually, not the point I should be making right now. The other thing is that we, we aren't, since we aren't entirely sure of the entire FNAF timeline, um, we still don't know, you know, where does, where does FNAF where does sister location fit into the entire thing, right? Because it's like, it's so kind of ambiguous. Um, it could fit really anywhere. So, the real question is, did Michael, uh, did Michael know about, did Michael experience the nightmares in FNAF 1 before, or before, uh, before Sister Location, or did he experience it afterwards, you know? And the interesting thing is, in uh, Sister Location, you can see the map of the FNAF 4 house in the, uh, was it the Parts and Services room? Um, because during that night, you can see, during the night that you're in that room, you can see uh, on the map, in the on the panel 
you know, the panel that you flip up, the, um, you can see the outline of every room featured in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. You, know, you can see the map from the minigames, you can see the map of the house that you actually, like, play in. Um, and then there was obviously the, and there was the plush trap room that was also in there. Um, and the, sorry, it's difficult to, you know, focus on playing the game and explain for that floor at the same time, but goddamn if I can't do it. Um, so I think the most interesting thing to take away from all this is that it was most likely, you most likely play as Michael during most FNAF games. I mean, the only ones that we know for certain you, like, you definitely don't are, like, you know, um... <laughs> It was, I think it was, uh, it was Ultimate Custom Night, and, um, the, and Help Wanted to, uh, Special Delivery, and Security Breach. Obviously, Security Breach, you play as Gregory in Security Breach, so you don't have, you, you're not playing as Michael. Michael is dead during Security Breach. Um, he's finally, like, actually dead. He's finally moved on, um, but the the other thing is that there is like huge debate over whether um, you play as uh, Michael or William in Ultimate Custom Night, um, and the reason why is because you know you're trapped with the lore behind Ultimate Custom Night is that you're trapped there by the one you should not have killed. Um, and that a lot of people think that it's that the person they're talking, the person, the one you should not have killed is the, uh, the person that, oh, wow, you're speedy, <laughs> um, is the, one of the spirits in Golden Freddy. Um, which is very likely. I think it is, actually. Um, but, main thing is that, uh, you know, the, alright, let's take a break here and let's talk. So, um, the main thing is that, you know, in support of Michael being the person in this, lit in this hell, and stuff is that he killed Evan. Evan might have hold, held some sort of grudge uh, against Michael. But the thing is, I don't think Evan really held a grudge against Michael because Michael murdered. Uh, Michael murdered uh, Evan on accident. He didn't think that. Uh, Fred Bear's jaw would close in on Evan's head and kill him instantly. So it was a complete accident. So I don't really think there was much of a reason for Evan to actually hold a grudge against Michael. Um, it was, it's more likely that it's William because I think a common theory right now is that, uh, you know, the, the common theory right now is that there are two spirits in Golden Freddy, and one of them is Evan, the crying child. The other one is a girl named Cassidy, one of the uh, children. I believe one of the children murdered in the uh, five missing children in the missing children incident. Um, and you know that's all another topic of discussion. Um, and the and you know obviously. He definitely, uh, you know, William definitely murdered with the intent of actually, you know, murdering. He actually murdered somebody. Well, he murdered multiple people. We don't need to get into that right now. Um, but the, the, what else is there? Um, yeah. So it's most likely William who, uh, is being tortured in this, in this hell, you know, um, and it's, 
it's likely that it's unlikely that um Mike is the one you know experiencing hell um since you know he didn't really kill anybody with intent he kind of just accidentally murdered his brother which admittedly is still not good <laughs> not advocating that it was good or anything similar um I'm just saying saying what I'm thinking you know and uh it's just like fucked up man it's messed up also why does William come back in uh you know, help Wanda in Security Breach. I do feel like Security Breach... Well, I do feel like Ultimate Custom Night was the perfect ending for that, you know, uh, story. Because it was like, you know, Michael, you know, it was like, Michael got what he wanted, he found his father, and now his father can go burn in hell. Henry got what he wanted and all that stuff. Henry's a whole other topic of discussion. Um... Henry is such like a mysterious. See, Henry is one of the most mysterious people in the series because we know so little about him, other than he was like the other guy who made Freddy Fazbear's, who made Fredbear's Family Diner with William, and he designed the animatronics. Um, and you know, he wanted to set free the souls that were trapped. He wanted to set free the souls of his daughter, um, Charlotte, and the souls of uh, Elizabeth Afton in Scrap Baby uh, and he finally he destroyed all the remnant used in the used in like Molten Freddy and entered and stuff um, and you know then he obviously he fucking burned William who at that point was uh, scrap trap and you know burn him and sent him to hell which was the ha he had the most badass voice line during there um, so yeah but yeah the badass voice line that he had which was cool as shit um, wouldn't I wouldn't change that voice line for the world honestly and, you know, while we're, on, while we're on this topic, I gotta say, Pizzeria Simulator is definitely one of the weirdest, one of the oddest games to me, because it's like, you know, you, it's like, it's really just like half, you know, Pizzeria Simulator, and half, uh, you know, regular Five Nights at Freddy's game, but it even has its own unique sort of twist to it. With what with the uh, what with the um, uh, you know events and doing the maintenance tasks and all that crap. Um, and I gotta say, Pizzeria Simulator definitely does a good job building up suspense by having the uh, having the Pizzeria Simulator part um, before the night segment. So it's like, you can definitely spend a lot of time, you know, doing, you know, organizing your pizzeria, doing all that crap, um, you know, organizing your pizzeria, adding, adding new stuff, um, but eventually you'll run out of things to do, and you'll be forced to, you know, go, you'll be forced into the night segment and if you you know have salvaged or bought a dangerous animatronic uh you are going to have to deal with a threat uh but if you haven't if you're a pussy like i am uh and you haven't bought you haven't salvaged or bought any animatronics uh then there's no threat but it's still real scary because of the noises <laughs> um Anyway, lore. So, like, you know... Uh, but yeah, William being back in Security Breach is real weird. He's actually got a pretty... I admit, a pretty cool design. I do like 
how Burn Trap looks. I think Burn Trap looks pretty sick, honestly. Um, it's just that I, there was so much potential for, you know, you know, obviously Ultimate Custom Night was the end of the whole Afton arc, really, and Security Reach really should have been the start of the Vanny arc, the true start, um, and you know, Help Wanted, Help Wanted should have been the start of the Vanny arc. But the problem is, is that you know they brought back William in the form of, you know. Glitch trap, and then there, it was like the weirdest thing. It's like, how did he get here? And then he's actually back. Like he escaped from the hell that he's in, and is now on this planet. It was now on this planet again. It's like, ugh, going through this again, huh? Um, but I mean, you know, it's whatever. Guess we get more William in future games, am I right, lads? Well, either way. Um, but yeah, honestly, I'm disappointed that Security Breach didn't have more with Vanny. Like, Vanny was there, like, a bit. Vanny was there, like, a bit. And then she never appeared again. Uh, which is a big shame. There's definitely a lot they could have done with her and stuff. Um, I know that in the files... It, people have found a Vanny meter where, you know, the longer you're in a room or something, the more it fills up. And then if you spend too much time in there, it um it fills up and Vanny shows up and you have to leave the room and all that stuff. Um, and it's like, it's interesting crap. I do hope they add that back in, you know, as like a, in a survival mode. Um, I also gotta say there is a there is the whole thing about um, you know the what else is I say? <laughs> Man, it's just talking about FNAF, it gets a it's a little confusing, you know, the little. Sometimes it gets a little complicated to talk about. Hey, don't fucking run away, you bitch. Fine, I'll let you leave. Um, yeah, it gets difficult, gets complicated. Keep track of everything. Um, let's see, let's go here. Okay, that's contestant. Um, fucking hell! Okay. Now, what was I saying? Alright. So, it's like... Anyway, back with the lore. Hey, I get back on track and do scatterbrain here. Um... With... Uh... With the missing children instant, it was definitely a weird... Definitely something that I don't think we still truly know, um, due to, I don't know if it's something we still fully know about, because, I mean, I don't know a lot about it, admittedly. I feel like I know less than I should, but I know five kids went missing, and I believe it happened during FNAF 1, but it's also more com more confusing, because I think there was also another group of like five kids that went missing during FNAF 2. So it's like, were the animatronics in FNAF 2 haunted? Or did they only become haunted in FNAF 1? Um, and it's like, it's just so confusing, you know? It's like, were they haunted? Were they not? It's really up for debate. Uh, I don't think the toy animatronics were haunted because, like, there was, I don't believe there were, because, like, when they start attacking on night one, there hadn't been any murders at that place at the time, um, at least not that I'm aware of, and they, uh, they, uh, they were already, like, attacking, so I think it's just, like, the, um, but the most commonly accepted theory is that uh, 
missing children ex incident was in FNAF 1 and there was a separate missing children's incident in FNAF 2 that happened which why we already have two bites why do we have to have two missing children incidents that happen to be the disappearance of five children it's so weird um, and there was a mini game in FNAF 2 with you know the puppet giving uh giving, you know, give gifts, give life to the animatronics. And it was, it was so weird, man. It's just, it's all so confusing. It's like, what do I believe? What do I not? What is true? What's fact? What's fiction? So what is happening? Am I going insane? Yes. Another cool piece of lore that I love.